Hey everybody, Mr. Judson here. So we're just doing more work with the unit circle and, and our six basic trig functions today, but kind of tweaking the problem a little bit, trying to make them a little different. So the, the directions, and these are the same directions you'll see in your, in your book. Um, it says in exercises 9 through 16, sketch a right triangle corresponding to the trig function of the acute angle. So the word acute means less than 90 degrees. That means we have to be in the first quadrant, right? Think, think of the first quadrant. You start at zero and you go to 90. Our angle has to be in the first quadrant, which means to us everything is going to be positive, okay? <clears throat> Use the Pythagorean theorem to determine the third side and then find the other five trig functions. So let me, let me start with number 10 here. So we know that the cosine of theta is going to be 5 sevenths. What I want to do is I want to find the sine theta, cosine theta, tangent theta, and then the reciprocals, cosecant theta, secant theta, and cotangent theta. Okay? And I know that the cosine is 5 sevenths. Well, I guess if I know this, I automatically know this one as well, right? We just got to flip it over. So this would be 7 fifths. So the rest of these, I'm going to need to use the Pythagorean theorem to try and, and, and figure out the third side uh, to help me out. So I'm, I'm in the first quadrant. I've got this triangle. And let me, let me just say something here to, to make sure that we all are kind of moving in the right direction. Every time I draw a triangle in on the xy coordinate system, I want to make sure I always put one side on the x-axis, never on the y-axis. Okay, It's a really important idea. I've kind of already been doing that. I haven't said anything about it, but maybe somebody has wondered, like, why do you put the triangle there instead of over here? Well, this is why. Um, and it has to do with something called a reference angle, which we'll, we'll talk about later. But every time I draw a triangle, I need for one edge to be resting on the x-axis, okay? And then my angle theta is going to be right here. So from SOHCAHTOA, we know that the cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So the adjacent side is 5, hypotenuse is 7. Now I want to use Pythagorean theorem to find that missing side. So let me just do this down here off the side. I've got, I'll just call this my, my y-coordinate. Okay, so I've got a squared plus b squared equals c squared. 5 squared plus y squared equals 7 squared. And, you know, I think we could shorten this up a little bit. If you're going to say 5 squared, we could do that in our head, right? So, so maybe the first thing I write down isn't 5 squared. Maybe I just go ahead and do that and write down 25. And same thing with this. Okay, I'm... I'm Oops. Same thing with this. I'm going to do 7 squared. I can do that in my head. So, so why not? Let's just call that 49. Okay? So 5 squared plus y squared equals 7 squared. So to solve for y, I've got to move the, the 25 over and subtract it. Uh, so if I subtract it, I'm going to get 24. So y squared equals 24. Therefore, y equals the square root of 24. Now, normally I would say plus or minus 24, but we know we're in the first quadrant, and we know our y-coordinate is positive, so I'm really only interested in the positive answer. Okay? I just got to simplify that. So, let's see, that's going to be 4 times 6. I know the square root of 4 is 2, so 2 root 6. And that's as far as that can simplify. So, 2 root 6. And, and now I think I can answer the rest of these questions. The sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So 2 root 6 over 7. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So that would be 2 root 6 over 5. And then I just got to flip these two over to get my cosecant and cotangent. So this would be 7 over 2 root 6 which we're going to have to rationalize. 
So I'll move that square root up. I'll get 7 root 6. And then get rid of the square root. So I got 6 times 2. That's 12. And that does not simplify. Remember, you can never simplify a number inside a square root with a number on the outside. This, this number right here really isn't 6, right? If I grab my calculator and I do the square root of 6, see that number right there is really 2.449. You can't simplify that with the 12 that's in the denominator. That doesn't work, right? All right, so let's see, I've got to flip this one over, so that would be 5 over 2 root 6, which equals 5 root 6, get rid of the square root sign, I've got a 6 times 2, that's 12, and that doesn't simplify either. So there it is, there's my 6 trig functions. All right, let me get you guys one to try. All right, so you guys go ahead and try this one. Um, List your, your six trig functions, write down what you know, <clears throat> and then off to the side, go ahead and draw a triangle, fill in the missing parts, and then see if you can get all six of those. Okay, let me go ahead and try. Alright, so I've got sine theta, cosine theta, tangent theta, and then the reciprocals, cosecant theta, remember can't start with the same letter, secant theta, and cotangent theta. <clears throat> and let's see, I know the cotangent is going to be 5. As a fraction, that's 5 over 1, so when I flip it over, I get 1 fifth right here. And I know that the tangent is opposite over adjacent, so there's two sides of my triangle. We're still in the first quadrant. Always want my triangle to have one side resting on the x-axis. There's theta. So opposite over adjacent, that means this is 1 and this is 5. <clears throat> so I'll call this h for hypotenuse. And so then I'll say 5 squared plus 1 squared equals h squared. That's 26. Take the square root of that, I get h equals root 26. And the only two numbers I can multiply to get that are 2 and 13. 26 and 1 doesn't help. Um, and neither one of those are perfect squares, 2 and 13. So that is simplified right there. So equals the square root of 26. All right, so sine is opposite over hypotenuse. That's 1 over root 26. Got to rationalize, so root 26 over 26. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And when I rationalize that, I get 5 root 26 over 26. And then when I flip these over, I'm not going to flip these fractions over. I want to flip these ones over because that puts the square root into the numerator. So root 26 over 1. And then here I get root 26 over 5. There it is. There's my 5 trig ratios. All right, let's try another problem. All right, so here's a, another type of problem they'll ask us today. Um, so we're talking about a cosine at 45 degrees. What, what they want us to do is to construct an appropriate triangle to complete the table for this. Um, they want theta to either be 0 to 90 or 0 to 2 to pi over 2. It, it depends on whether or not we're working in radians or, or uh, degrees. And so just say we're going to pick one or the other. And whatever it is, we're going to stay in the first quadrant again. So I just got to think, okay, 45, what's that as a radian? Well, let's see. Um, construct an appropriate triangle. So if I do that, I'm going to think unit circle, 45 degrees is that middle tick mark, so my appropriate triangle is going to be this one. Again, we have to have one side of the triangle on the x-axis. Okay, there's, there's our angle 45 degrees. 
So if I, if I put my tick marks in here, that's 1, 2, 3 pi over 12, reduce that, you get pi over 4. So we're just, we're just converting degrees to radians. I'm using the unit circle instead of multiplying by pi over 180. Um, one quick comment about that. If you did four, 45 degrees times pi over 180 degrees, I, I know a lot of us, we, we answered this on our homework in decimal form, and that's because the direction said to do that. But um, I want to make sure we get that what's normal is to write this as a fraction and as an exact value. So if, if I wrote this as 45 pi over 180, I'd look at that and go, well, both of those can be divided by 5. So that's going to be 9 pi over, let's see, 5 goes into there, 3 times that'd be 15, and then 6, so 36. And then I'd look at that and say, well, both of those can be divided by 9. So 9 divided by 9 is 1, 36 divided by 9 is 4, and there's that angle. We, we really want to get used to exact angles versus decimal values that are, that are rounded, okay? I know our directions on the assignment said that, so, so no biggie, we did what we were told to do. Um, but I think that's where we really want to get on this, right? And then what's, what's the function value? What is the cosine of 45 or the cosine of, of pi over 4? Well, we're on the middle tick mark. We know that our coordinates in the middle are always root 2 over 2. And in the first quadrant, everything's positive, so there it is, root 2 over 2. I've done what they asked us to do. Okay, let me get you guys one to do. All right, so let's go ahead and try this one. Um, this time we're talking about the tangent. I don't know what the angles are, but I know that when I do opposite divided by adjacent, think soka toa, toa, o over a, so that's opposite over adjacent, I'm going to get that for an answer. So you guys go ahead and try that. Same way we did the previous one. All right, so if I start by drawing a unit circle, there it is. And I, I know that this angle is not the middle tick mark. Well, how do I know that? Well, if I did the tangent of a middle tick mark, I would get root 2 over 2. I didn't get that. So it must be one of the other ones. Which one is it? I, I don't know. And I've always kind of taken this um, position that I don't have to memorize things if I can figure them out easily. Okay? So I don't know which tick mark it is, but I know it's either this one or this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to guess. And if I get it right, then ha! Ah. If I get it wrong, then it's the other one. Okay? Either way, I'm going to know after one guess. So I'll just guess this triangle right here. I know that my coordinates there, my x-coordinate looks like it is not half the length from here to here. So that would be root 3 over 2. Um, this would be 1 half. And I already know that that's going to be 1. Okay, because I'm picking something off the unit circle. And so what I want to do for tangent, I want to do opposite over adjacent and see if I get that for an answer. And if I don't, then I'm going to know I should have tried this tick mark. Okay? So let's see, if I do 1 half divided by root 3 over 2, I already know the 2's will cancel, so I'm just going to look at the numerators. I'm going to do 1 divided by root 3, and when I rationalize that, I get root 3 over 3. So lucky me, I, I guessed right, okay? Um, now, you guys got to understand, I really didn't know which one was the answer. Even as a teacher, I didn't know. Could I have thought about it and maybe figured it out? Maybe, but I didn't want to think about it. I wanted to do this the easiest way possible, which is just try it and see if it works. If it didn't work, I still did the same amount of work, because I know that this one up here would be the right angle. Now, you know, for me that's easy to say, because I'm pretty confident about that, 
you know, for, for you guys, maybe you're like, I'm not so confident. I'm going to at least try it and see. Okay, so, you know, you, you, you erase this triangle, you draw one up here, you relabel the sides, and you go, okay, yeah, it did work. But eventually, you'll build that same confidence, okay? All right, so that's my second tick mark, which is 15 times 2, that's 30 degrees, or 2 pi over 12, which is pi over 6. So 30 degrees, pi over 6. There we go. I filled in the chart. Okay. All right, so we'll have a few problems like that um, on our homework. Let's try one more. All right, so um, in this one it says, uh, in these exercises, use the given function values, these two right here, and the trigonometric identities. So these are all the identities that we talked about last Friday, okay? They're on page 304 in our book, okay? So rather than draw a triangle, they want us to use those identities. All right, well, first of all, I know that the cosecant and the, and the sine are reciprocals of each other. So I'm just going to say for part A, cosecant of 30 degrees equals 2 over 1, or just 2. Part B, they change the angle on us. So let me, let me hold off on part B for just a second. Let's go to C. Um, so find the cosine of 30 degrees. Well, one of the identities that we talked about was the Pythagorean identity, sine squared. Now, remember I told you guys I've, I've got this, this thing called chicken scratch. I'm not really writing the, I'm not writing the identity down as an answer. It's just me keeping things straight in my head. So I know that sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. And I know the sine is equal to one-half, okay? Now, first of all, let me just say this. This rule is true as long as the angles for both sine and cosine are the same, okay? 30 degrees there, 30 degrees there, so we're good. So I'm going to put a one-half here for the sine, one-half squared, plus cosine 30 squared, and that equals one. So if I square this, what I get is 1 fourth plus cosine squared 30 degrees equals 1. I'm going to move this 1 fourth over here and subtract it. So I've got cosine squared of 30 degrees equals 1 minus 1 fourth is 3 fourths. Okay, think money. 1 minus, a dollar minus a quarter. 3 quarters. And now I just need to take the square root of that. So, cosine of 30 is equal to the square root of 3 fourths. Um, really, this should be plus or minus. It doesn't say whether we're in the first quadrant. Oh, um, we are in the first quadrant because the sine is positive and the tangent is positive. So, we have to be in the first quadrant which means the cosine has to be positive, so I'm only interested in the positive answer, okay? <coughs> All right, so this equals the square root of 3, and the square root of 4 is 2, and there's my answer, which makes sense because if the sine is 1 half and we're on the unit circle, that's my value of the cosine. Now, why didn't I do it that way? Well, because in, in the directions, they said, use the trig identities to find your answer. I think it's really important that we make sure we do this, because the more we follow the directions, the more we understand all the things that we're, that we're looking at here in terms of trig. Okay? And I know there's a lot, and there's a lot more to come. So, you know, we just want to make sure that we're doing what the directions say, so we fully understand the big picture. Really important. All right, so let's see. For part C, I got cosine 30 degrees equals root 3 over 2. And I know the cotangent of 30 is just the reciprocal of the tangent, so I can just flip that over. So D, cotangent of 30 degrees equals 3 over root 3. 
So I have to rationalize that, so I get 3 root 3 over 3. Those 3's cancel, and I get just square root of 3. All right, so the last thing we got to do is we got to go back and figure out B. What's the cotangent of 60 degrees? And how do I get that when everything else is in terms of a 30 degree angle? Well, I want to look at something on our unit circle. Okay, let me, let me bring a picture of the unit circle in. It's, it's hard to see this here, but when you have two angles that add up to 90, if you take the, let's say 30 and 60 add up to 90, if you take the cosine of one and the sine of the other, you get the same answer. Okay, anytime the two angles add up to 90 degrees, the cosine of one is equal to the sine of the other. Let's, let's check something on our, um, on our calculator. All right, so let's, let's check something on our calculator real quick. If, if I do the cosine, let's see, what mode am I in here? I'm in degree mode. Okay. So if I do the cosine of 20 degrees, and I do the sine of 70 degrees, I get the exact same answer for that. All right? If I do the cosine of 5 degrees, and I do the sine of 85 degrees, as long as these two angles add up to 90 degrees, these should produce the same answer. Exact same decimal, digit for digit, all the way across. So what that means to us is when I look at this, um, okay, so we were talking sine and cosine. The same thing's true with tangent and cotangent and secant and cosecant. These co-functions and the regular functions, if you take the, like let's just say tangent of one angle and cotangent of another, if those two angles add up to 90, you get the same answer. All right? So when I look at this, we're saying, okay, cotangent of 60, that should be equal to the tangent of 30, which is root 3 over 3. I don't even have to do any work. If I know that, that one piece of information. So, so right here, the cotangent of 60 degrees, I'm just going to say that's equal to the, that's equal to the tangent of 30, which is root 3 over 3. There's all my answers. All right. We haven't talked about this as an identity yet, um, but it's something that we will talk about and we will just learn to recognize. Um, okay, so just to look at this idea one more time to make sure we see it with a different uh, set of trig functions. If I do tangent of, let's say, 46 degrees, there's what I get. And now I want to do cotangent of 44 degrees. Those two add up to 90, right? So to do the cotangent, I have to do 1 divided by the tangent of 44. And I should get the same value there. There it is, digit for digit. Okay. All right, you guys go ahead and give this one a shot. So we know the secant of theta is 5. Tangent of theta is 2 root 6. Um, this means that the cosine is positive, tangent's positive, everything's positive. That means we're probably in the first quadrant. All right, you guys give it a shot. All right, so I know that the cosine is the reciprocal of the secant, so that's going to be one fifth. I know the cotangent is the reciprocal of the tangent, so that's going to be one over two root six. And if I rationalize that, I get root 6 over 2 times 6, which is 12. So let's see, how do I figure out the sine? So here's, here's where we use that Pythagorean identity. I could say sine squared theta plus cosine squared is equal to 1. So this would be sine squared theta equals 1. Let's see, this is going to be 1 over 25. I'll move it over and subtract it. And 
minus, so that would be 25 twenty fifths minus 1 twenty fifth, that's 24 twenty fifths. So now I need to take the square root of that, so the sine of theta is going to equal square root of 24 twenty fifths. And I know it's positive because I already know we're in the first quadrant and, and everything's positive. So the square root of 25 would be 5. If I, if I had to simplify the square root of 24, that's 4 times 6. Square root of 4 is 2. So that's 2 root 6. So 2 root 6 over 5. So I've got 3 of these now. And the cotangent of 90 minus theta. Well, I don't, I don't know what theta is, but if I take this angle and this angle, theta plus 90 minus theta, well, that's just going to be theta plus 90 minus theta. Those two will add up to 0. And so I can say that those two angles add up to 90. And if they do, well, then the tangent of 1 equals the cotangent of the other, right? Let's just say theta was 20 degrees. Well, 90 minus 20 is 70. 70 and 20, yeah, those add up to 90, okay? So, so these two things have to be equal to each other. 2 root 6. And there's that answer. All right. That's what we have for today, you guys. Uh, let me get you a homework assignment, okay? All right, so this is week three. Today's Tuesday, so we're doing page 308, 9 to 31 odd. And, and these problems all look like exactly what we just did, okay? All right, you guys, there it is. You guys take care, stay safe. I'll